Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, let's find out if you need to defrag your Mac hard drive. So if you're not familiar with the term, defrag is short for defragment. And basically what it means is to take your hard drive and optimize it. You see, files on a hard drive don't exist just in one spot. A large file may actually be written to different parts of the hard drive. Defragmenting it means it takes all the parts of a single file and places it on just one part of the hard drive. Let me show you. Okay, so let's say these gray blocks represent blocks of data on your hard drive. They're all empty right now. Well, let's say we write three files to the drive. The first one's represented by the red blocks, and then there's a small one represented by green blocks, and then a larger one by the yellow. Now what happens if we delete the green file? Now we've freed up those two blocks so they're gray again and we still have the red and yellow file there. Now let's say we want to write a new file. Now what used to happen is the hard drive would put the beginning of the file in the first free space you could find. You could see those two purple blocks there and then you would end up with the rest of the file in the rest of the free space. So you can see how the purple file is now divided up into two parts. So we can defrag and what that would do basically is move those two blocks so purple is all together. Matter of fact it would do even more than that. It would actually move all the files so it would move yellow up taking up those two spaces there and move purple right after it to so all the free spaces after the files. Matter of fact it may even do more than that. It may go ahead and rearrange the files completely to optimize them. So it may determine that purple is used more than the yellow file is. So it may put that first earlier on the hard disk where it's easier and quicker to access. So this was actually very useful, especially in the old days when hard drives were smaller and before the introduction of Mac OS X extended file format. You see, then things would actually slow down as files got more and more fragmented. You may have files that took up hundreds of different places on the hard drive and trying to read them was quite a chore. You see it would read part of the file and then the head on the hard drive would have to jump and start reading another part of the file and that would really slow down the reading of the file. Whereas one continuous block it would read it very quickly. So the question is do you still need to defragment your Mac hard drive now in 2010 using Leopard or Snow Leopard? And the answer is no. See first of all hard drives are a lot bigger and faster. They're bigger so there's more space to write files continuously and they're faster so those jumps from sector to sector really don't take as much time as they did before. Also Mac OS X extended file format which is used by Leopard and Snow Leopard uh, doesn't really need defragmentation because it takes care of it on its own. See what it will do is it will do simple things like it won't write a file in separate places. It will simply write it continuously as long as it has space only relying on putting them in separate places if you're running low on drive space. Here's some more reasons. You see when computers and hard drives were slower applications would simply append to the end of a file as you continue to edit it and use it. Now that drives are faster most applications simply rewrite the entire file every time you save. So uh, the defragmentation that would happen is it would add bits to the end doesn't happen anymore because it simply rewrites the file as a completely new file. So also two things about Mac OS X. First it will automatically defragment small files. So for some reason it has to write a small file supposedly less than 20 megs to the drive in several different bits. It will actually rewrite that file at its first opportunity into one piece. So kind of the defragmentation is going on all the time. Also Mac OS X is made up of thousands of tiny little files. I'm talking about the operating system itself and these are automatically put in the optimum part of the hard drive. So defragmenting won't help with the majority of your files because they're already exactly where they need to be. So what if your Mac is running slow? Will defragmentation help? Well in the old days that was one of the first things that you tried to do to speed up your machine. But today chances are that's not going to be the problem. First thing to look at is is your hard drive almost full? Because if it's almost full then defragmenting may help temporarily maybe even just for minutes or hours and then you're going to run into the same problem again. So if you have a drive that's filled up you may want to clear off some space or get a larger hard drive. Another thing you may want to consider is putting larger media on an external drive. I know if you've got a MacBook it's hard to get a larger drive in there so you may want to think about putting some larger files or maybe video editing things, uh, large files like that. Stick them on an external drive and use them there so that you have a large amount of space free on your drive. That's going to do a lot more to speed up your Mac than a single defragmentation. 
Now, Apple and a lot of bloggers recommend an alternative to defragmentation if you want to do it. See, defragmentation takes a long time. It's got to rearrange and rewrite all the files in your drive, swapping them around. There have been reports of anywhere from a few hours to a few days to defragment a hard drive. Remember, when we used to do this back in the 90s, drives were a lot smaller, usually under one gig. And now that we have drives that are up to a terabyte, you can imagine how long it takes to rearrange all that information, especially if the drive's almost full. So one way to do it much quicker is simply back up your drive, of course do your regular time machine backup and maybe a second backup for safety, then reformat it and restore it from time machine. This will rewrite all the files one by one to the drive, basically doing a defragmentation but in a much smarter and quicker way. Now I did come across one situation where you do need to defrag your drive. That's if you've been using your Mac for a long time and you decide you want to install Boot Camp. And Boot Camp wants to put that special Windows partition in a continuous piece of space on your drive. And if it can't find that, it's going to give you an error message and tell you to defrag. Well, the easiest way to handle it then is to do the backup twice and then restore from scratch. That will take care of the defragmentation in a fraction of the time that probably the regular defragmentation software would. So that's a look at defragmentation, what it is and why you shouldn't really need to do it on your Mac ever. Apple says you shouldn't and lots of bloggers and lots of individuals have tested and reported back that it hasn't really changed things or sped anything up on modern Macs. I hope you found this useful. Until next time, this is Gary Rosenzweig with MacMost Now.